Listen to Megan Phelps go through Romans 9 from the Calvinistic perspective and ultimately uh, stating as the reason she left uh, Christianity altogether. Uh, why does God allow that? So this is why I'm not a Christian anymore. Oh, um, you got confused and you're like, what the? Well, so there's this passage in Romans 9. Well, it's not, it's not the only reason I should say, but, but I, have really, I have real trouble with this. And I think it's, it, it's still hard for me to say, I think this is evil, but I think this is evil. There's this passage in, in Romans 9 that talks about, uh, it gives this analogy of God as potter and humans as clay in his hands. And it uses the example of Jacob and Esau, who in the Bible, Jacob and Esau were twins. And it says, while they were yet in the womb, before either of them had done good or evil, God loved Jacob and hated Esau. And it, so it paints this picture of God, you know, it says, what if God, willing to show his wrath and make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath made for destruction. So it says God created some people as vessels of mercy, people that he loves, and others as vessels of wrath made for destruction. So made for the express purpose of destroying them, of torturing them in hell for eternity. So, and then, so he, it's Paul who's writing, he, he paints this picture, God making you do all of the things that you do and then blessing some and cursing others. And he says, well, you'll, you're going to ask me then, why does God yet find fault for who has resisted his will? Right? So yeah. if God's making you do it, why is he punishing you for it? Right. If God's making you do a horrible thing and you resist his will. You can't resist his will. Right. And so he makes you do it and then he punishes you for it. And the answer is, you don't get to ask that question. Oh. It says, Nay, but O oh man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? You just don't get to ask that question. And to me, I, so I, this is, I've asked, like, for, I spent a long time talking to Christians uh, and, you know, people of, well, mostly Christians, because it's obviously it's New Testament, so, and, but also talking to Jewish people about the Old Testament and found so many of the, like, interpretations, so many of the, our beliefs are not, they're not fully supported by, by the Bible and that there are so many different ways of interpreting so many of our, the more destructive of our beliefs. But that one, I have not found any explanation for that passage that's anything, that makes any kind of sense, that's consistent with the text and, and not evil. Um, the title of this particular podcast with Derek Webb on it is called How Christianity Made Me a Better Atheist with Derek Webb. Um, and, and I would probably want to retitle that and say how, how Calvinism made me a better atheist with Derek Webb, because ultimately what you will hear him doing throughout this entire broadcast is describe Calvinism as if it is Christianity. Um, and of course, that's, that's the question up for debate. Um, and, and, and it becomes the question as would Derek Webb have abandoned a Christianity as described by traditionalists in the same way that he abandoned his Calvinism? Um, because he seems to be convinced, like Megan Phelps in the, the clip I just played, that, that God seems evil, that there's, there's a sense in which it's just really uh, obviously hard to swallow that God is, is doing these things. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I want to go through some of this in your article because you bring these things out. But it, it's one thing to read it, and it's another thing to hear it for yourself and to see him actually saying it. So why don't we start right here by um, playing a clip of Derek Webb talking to a, a, a friend of his named Matthew Cook. Uh, this is produced uh, back in September the 10th of 2018, not long ago. And I'm picking up at the 57-minute mark. And this is where Derek Webb really explains, uh, I think, you know, ultimately why he left Calvinism and his argument against the whole concept and idea of uh, uh, you know how Calvinism, in a sense, is is uh, become circular arguments and and uh, how he reasons that his faith is uh, his faith is gone ultimately because he's he's not chosen, which is some of the lyrics within his song and everything else. And so, let's listen to this clip first, uh, Steve, and then let's discuss it. Tricky yes. because because Christianity is not a tolerant, open it's not. religion. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. And, and if and, it will be, that's going to be a future thing. That's right. going to be very divorced from what we are. The experience that we have of it as it's laid out in the Bible. And, yeah. and, but the thing is, like, I remember at the time kind of being okay with that. I mean, hard as it was yeah. to have to be honest about it, I was like, listen, this isn't my fault. 
Yeah. And I don't know why I get it and some people don't. You know, I go back to Ephesians 2, 8, 9. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, it had nothing to do with me. Yep, yep. But I do, for whatever reason, see this. Yeah. And I wish I could, I wish that I had the luxury of telling you that you could behave in any way that you wish and yeah. you can believe anything that you wish and that all roads are going to go to the same place. Yeah. But that's just not so what the Bible says. Yeah. I tell you my story and I can tell you what I believe it says. And then you're going to have to reckon with that yourself. Yeah. And I can't convince you, but I can pray yep. and things like that. We can all depend on the spirit. What, which interestingly is where I leave, where I, where I leave it now. Hmm. And with my Christian friends who try to convince me of this, I say, listen, like, I don't know why you're trying to persuade me. Hmm. Because your own Bible says it's a gift. that it's a gift. It's the work of the Spirit start to finish. It's a, it's the, a removing of a heart of stone or replacing with a heart of flesh. That is not something you can do for me. Yeah. So if it's true, we're both depending on the Spirit to show yeah. up. I'm literally in the grave next to Lazarus yeah. waiting, for the to hear, waiting, waiting to hear my name. Yeah. And I'm going to lay in there dead till he shows up. Yeah. Somebody asked me uh, near the beginning of this year living Christianly, well, what would it take for you to believe? What would it take for mm. you to believe in God? Well, that's easy. God would have to give me faith yeah. Yeah. because um, I can't yeah. reach out and yeah. grab it. What it would take is a miracle. It would take a miracle. Yeah, it would. Like, and, and what, 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 what does it take for a dead man to come out of his, to come six feet out of the ground. Yeah. It takes someone to dig him out, yep. to open the box and revive him. Breathe into his nostrils. And, and the Bible makes it very clear that there is nothing less spiritually than that going on yeah. in salvation. Absolute new life. New life from death to life. Yeah. And that's what would be required. Yeah, and and I I, I and I'm open to that. it. I'm, I mean I'm oh, literally yeah. I'm literally in the grave waiting to hear my name. Yeah, any time. If, that, if that's the because if there is going to be a work of the Spirit going on. I want in. And I won't be able to resist it. And yeah. I can't call out for it. Yeah. I cannot coax him over. Yeah. Either my name is written in the book of life or it's not. Yeah. And, and I mean, so if we're going to really get into the language, the hard language of the Bible, provocative as it may be, mm -hmm. like I'm had, I got to a point, I don't like binary ideas or statements, but yeah. there's a few that feel emotionally like they are, yeah. although maybe they're not. But there's a point where I said, you know what, maybe, maybe God made me and fashioned me for destruction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, vessel for that. Because he, he says he does that. Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated, through, for the good pleasure of his own will. To That's the right. Of his and, will. and he receives no counsel but his own about yep. that. And so there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to change his mind about it. So maybe it's all real and I'm just not chosen. And yeah. that's a thing I'm going to have to just, that's just a thing I'm going to have to reckon with. Yeah. And that's not a thing I can really do anything about. Right. And it would so, seem unnatural and almost, it would seem shady to try to do something about it in a way, to try to strong arm a faith no. into oneself. So I'm going to try to make the best of this. Yeah. And I'll, and I'm listening. Yeah. I'm having some listening. I mean, in, in as far as Lazarus was listening the moment before he heard his name out of Jesus' mouth. Yeah. Which a dead man cannot. Can't. So he wasn't listening. No. <laughs> he wasn't paying attention. Yep. He wasn't flagging someone down. He wasn't wishing or hoping for it. He, he wasn't, wasn't seeking. Leaning forward. He wasn't seeking it. No. He was just suddenly called out. Yeah. Came alive and came out. And that was the only response he could have had. Because he had no choice. And because he had no choice. I mean, that's a hard, that's a hard and biblical word. Yeah. And, um, and that's the Christianity I resonate with. Me which, too. Yeah. And so what's so funny <laughs> is that all my friends call me um, <laughs> like, like a reformed atheist because <laughs> because when I do pick up the language of Christianity and start to speak it again which is it's a language I'm fluent in oh yeah just like you it's can still have the, the accent of a country you no longer in which you no longer live yeah and I you can still detect the accent on my my speaking but um, I go immediately into that reform view only because it's just the one that seemed to make the most logical sense to me it was very it's, consistent it's the one that seemed like it made the most sense of the whole thing to me yeah and so that's still the one I go to and some of my friends so, so what's hysterical is that I will find myself in theological debates with friends arguing a, a biblical position yep arguing from a Bible that I have no belief in. But I'm just like, but I'll, I'll argue all the tenets of Reformed theology with them and sometimes win. Yep. And then at the end of it, just have to say. That was weird. And by the way, that was weird because I for sure don't believe any, any of what of either of us have just been talking oh about. Oh my God. Uh, wow. Now, I, you know, I, when you hear it put out that clearly, um, and you heard me on the broadcast before talk about how people can come to these conclusions, how I even struggled with some of these things as a, as a young Calvinist and dealing with my own addictions, which is another thing he talks about in another broadcast about sexuality and, uh, you know, problems like that. But this is, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is when it comes down to really how people can walk away from Christianity as a whole because of the unique claims of Calvinism.